and uh, follow, follow your follow the footsteps of your teacher. So following the footsteps of your teacher means um, if the teacher is going right, you go right. If the teacher moves two steps right, you go two steps right, uh, two steps left, two steps left as well. Unless you are told to do otherwise, you follow whatever your teacher um, tells you to do or what he does. So uh, that uh, the title of this particular, uh, the title of this chapter, which is emulating the teacher's uh, realizations and the actions. So emulating the action. So there are two, two, two parts. One is emulating the realization and the other is emulating the um, actions. Emulating the realization means uh, following your teachers, the instructions that were um, given by your teacher and uh, practicing as your teacher tells you to do, practicing uh, following the proper practices as given by your, uh, the instructions given by your teacher. And uh, by doing so uh, yourself also having, attaining the same realizations as that of your teacher. So for example, if your teacher uh, tells you, the teacher obviously has the uh, realization of, uh, um, so when we talk about realization, sometimes we think realization, uh, Post-realization is a great thing to have. But when we sometimes, when we think that, uh, when we talk about realizations, we think realization is something so far away, very far ahead uh, for us to reach. Uh, but actually something as simple as uh, having the refuge in the triple gem uh, is also, is also uh, uh, it's, it's a type of um, realization. So when you have a proper understanding of the uh, triple gem, the benefits of taking refuge in the triple gem, <laughs> and when you have a proper, when you take, uh, after understanding uh, the benefits, uh, after after understanding the, um, the benefits, the pros uh, of taking refuge in the triple gem, and once you commit yourself to uh, taking refuge in the triple gem, when you are fully committed to taking refuge in the Buddha, Dharma, and Sangha, then you have attained the realization of uh, a proper refuge. And so that can be uh, um, ticked off. That can be understood as a, a realization. So realization does not necessarily mean you see uh, the ultimate truth or you, see, you are able to reach uh, uh, the arahat or something very high. Uh, so there are many different levels of realization. So something as simple as uh, uh, taking refuge in the triple gem can also be construed as uh, a, a, a realization. So once you have a proper, uh, once you are committed, once you are properly committed to taking refuge in the triple gem, then you actually have the realization of uh, uh, taking refuge in the triple gem. <clears throat> so when you have proper refuge in the triple gem, uh, you have the realization of taking refuge in the uh, triple gem. So uh, Realization is something that you have a full conviction. Uh, um, you, uh, you have a conviction. Uh, you have the conviction towards a certain spiritual um, attainment. So when you have that, you have a realization. So you can have realization of, of the understanding of emptiness. You can have realization um, uh, of uh, the, the, the refuge into the triple gem and so on and so forth. So once you are fully, once you have full trust uh, towards the triple gem and then you are fully committed to take refuge in the Buddha and the Dhamma and the Sangha, then you actually have the realization of uh, um, the, the refuge, the, the realization of the proper refuge. You have that. So uh, the, coming back to the topic, coming back to the name, the title of this, uh, the coming back to the title of the, uh, the chapter that we are covering today, which is emulating the teacher, teacher's realization and emulating the teacher's actions. So emulating the teacher's realization is, so, you know, your teacher obviously has uh, a lot of realizations and uh, one of which will be, uh, for example, for example, one of which is the uh, refuge. So the teacher gives you proper instruction on as to how to take a refuge. What are the, tr the three, three uh, what are the three jewels for the triple gem? Uh, what is a Buddha? What is the Dharma? What is a Sangha? And uh, what is not a Buddha, not a Dharma, not a Sangha? 
and how to take refuge in the Buddha Dharma Sangha and what should you do following uh, after taking refuge in the Buddha Dharma Sangha, what should you do and all these things. So once you have all the information, uh, then you follow your teacher and then after, uh, uh, you know, uh, after following your teacher, um, if you um, are fully convinced uh, of what your teachers fully convinced with your the instruction that you receive from your teacher and then you are ready to commit then you commit yourself to taking refuge in the buddha dharma sangha then you have the realization as same as your teacher has so in that sense uh, you are following your teacher in the uh, proper path um, so we can uh, you know the information on the triple gem is available online everybody can read that so if I just, uh, you know, there, there are so many people, there, there are many people who have actually read about and seen about the Triple Gem and uh, uh, knows about this thing. But then uh, when you feel like, oh, the Triple Gem is something very far-fetched, I don't believe in this, uh, you know, that sort of um, thing. And I don't think Buddha will be able to help me. The Dharma will be able to, you know, give us uh, liberation. And the, the Sangha is no help to me at all. And uh, I, I do see so many Sangha who are very misbehaving and so on and so forth. So for that reason, I don't believe in the Dhamma, Buddha and Sangha and I don't trust them to help me, uh, to take me out of samsara and so on and so forth. Even if you have all the information, if you don't feel like, uh, if you are not fully convinced that the Buddha Dhamma Sangha will be able to help you or to take, uh, um, not be able to help you and for that reason you do not seek refuge in the buddha dhamma and sangha then uh, you will the, the, the realization of uh, taking refuge will never be uh, generated within your mind stream <clears throat> so for that reason uh, for even if your teacher uh, gives you a certain instruction on how to follow and how to um, um, what what are the Buddha Dharma Sangha and how to follow the Buddha Dharma Sangha. All the instructions were pro provided, all the information were provided. If you don't believe in it, if you are not convinced with it, and if you don't, uh, um, if you do not commit yourself to taking refuge in the Buddha Dharma Sangha, then no matter how well informed you are of the Triple Gem or the refuge and so on and so forth, the realization of taking refuge will never be generated within you. <clears throat> so by uh, properly following your teacher uh, with instructions and following his footsteps and whatever uh, understanding you have, uh, whatever realizations, you, whatever understandings that you have gained through properly following your teachers would be uh, construed as the uh, realizations that you have attained um, from following your teacher. And so for, uh, so this is how you follow your teacher or emulate your teacher through uh, by Emulate, emulate your teacher in the, uh, uh, the, the emulating your teacher's uh, realizations. This is how you do it. And uh, so this is how you uh, emulate or copy your, uh, follow your teacher, copy his. Uh, so whatever realization that the copy, uh, that the teacher has within himself or herself, uh, you emulate that. And uh, so, uh, Emulating the realization is internal emulate, uh, internal emulation or internal uh, copy copying. So you copy what your teacher has internalized, uh, and you do the same. And uh, once you have uh, internalized what your teacher has uh, um, attained or uh, instructed you to internal internalize, then you all, you have to follow uh, what your the actions that your teacher uh, is committed towards as well. So, so basically what happens is, uh, you know, uh, realization is all about developing yourself, right? You cannot uh, make another person realize for you or another person cannot realize for you. Uh, <clears throat> so you have to make your own realizations. Uh, but once you, uh, your teacher cannot make realization for you, uh, but you have to make the realizations within yourself, internalize the instructions that your teacher gives you. Uh, so for that reason, uh, uh, realization, uh, emulation of the teacher's realization can be only can only be done by myself. Um, so this is an internal practice, and uh, copying your teacher or emulating your teacher with action is something that you can do 
or four or two others as well. So for example, I cannot give you my understanding of the refuge, my understanding of emptiness, my understanding of uh, uh, ultimate truth, my understanding of impermanence, my understanding or experience of bodhicitta. I cannot give you that, but I can share you my experiences, my, uh, the, the, all the, I can share the experience, uh, the what sort of experiences that I, I had, what sort of uh, understanding that I had gathered, and then and and give you the uh, the guidelines as how to attain that or how to achieve that yourselves. But uh, the act, the actual attainment or the actual achievement is something that you have to do it yourself. So uh, the chapter, the title of today's chapter, which is emulating the teachers' uh, realizations and emulating the teacher's actions. So emulating the teacher's realization is something that you can only internalize yourself. Uh, emulating the teacher's action is something that you can share with others. So for example, uh, I, can ex I can share my uh, experiences of how um, to generate a bodhicitta or how to gain understanding or insight into emptiness and the ultimate truth. I can share all of that to you, but I cannot transfer my understanding and uh, my realization to you <clears throat> so that uh, uh, copying or emulating the teacher's actions is uh, something that um, for example my teachers have taught me how to uh, the, the, the meaning of emptiness the, the essence of what emptiness is the what are the, you know um, what are what is the uh, ultimate practice the what is the bodhicitta uh, how to realize the ultimate truth and so on and so forth and that is something that I can share with you. So I am copying what my teacher did. I'm emulating my teacher's actions of giving this teaching, which I received to you. Um, so that is emulating the teacher in essence, emulating the teacher's action in essence. <clears throat> so uh, now when it comes to, uh, so this is uh, like the, the, the general, um, preview of uh, how to follow a teacher uh, in his realizations and his actions. So <clears throat> now when we talk about uh, so this is like a teacher in general, uh, a spiritual teacher in general, a spiritual friend or a spiritual teacher in general. Uh, so I, I don't remember, I don't recall whether I said it before or not, but uh, there is a term called, uh, so the teacher the, the term teacher, which is very, uh, very freely used in English as teacher. Uh, sometimes we use the term master, sometimes teacher. Uh, sometimes we also use the term guru. So these things are, you know, all different words. And uh, so for that would actually make a lot of confusion as, uh, you know, are all the gurus uh, masters and teachers or are all the teachers masters and gurus, uh, et cetera, et cetera. So this can be very confusing. So um, this is a, um, so, 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 so the word uh, in the master, teacher, guru is something that is used in English, but I don't, I think there, it, there may be different terms used, used in Vietnamese and also in Tibetan, there are different words. So what I'm gonna say is uh, I'm gonna use uh, the, uh, the Sanskrit word, which is more, I think, uh, more reliable uh, or maybe the Tibetan word, which is more reliable than the English word, because it's a very new translation. So, you know, it's very flexible and it's very, um, dis uh, you know, uh, so uh, it's quite ambiguous, that English word. Um, so therefore, I don't know how you're going to translate it into other languages. So maybe I, I will use English, I will use Sanskrit. Uh, so in the Sanskrit, though, there's a word called Kalyan Mitra, which means a virtuous friend. Uh, literal meaning is virtuous friend. Um, so it's also interpreted as spiritual friend. Uh, so that is one term. And then another term is guru. So in Tibetan for spiritual friend or virtuous friend, we use the word xinyin or gigen. <clears throat> and for the term uh, guru in Tibetan, we use the uh, word lama. So guru is equal to lama and uh, uh, um, uh, is equal to Kalyan Mitra or spiritual, uh, virtuous friend or spiritual friend. And uh, so the, the, the reason I'm making this distinction is 
Kalyan Mitra or spiritual friend or spiritual friend is a term that is most widely used in the Sutra Yana, in the Sutra teachings. In the Sutra Yana teachings, you uh, find uh, this word um, mentioned a lot. The, the, the term uh, Kalyan Mitra, which is a spiritual friend or virtuous friend, is mentioned more than, and most of the time, you will never find the word Guru uh, in the Sutra Yana teachings. You will find the word something called uh, Lobin, which is uh, equal to a master, a master as a, in the sense of a uh, master, master of ceremony, master of uh, you know um, this particular uh, uh, science, must ma master of uh, this this or that particular science or field. Uh, <clears throat> this is also quite common. Uh, the Sanskrit equivalent of master is acharya. So, but you will not find the term guru uh, in most of the uh, the sutrayana teachings. Uh, Whenever the term is the guru is used, it is always used in the tantric uh, tantric teachings or the Vajrayana teachings. But uh, uh, since the Tibetan Buddhism is very rich in uh, Vajrayana Buddhism, and also there is a lot of mix up between uh, Sutrayana and Vajrayana uh, teachings among the Tibetan public as well. So we use the term uh, guru and uh, Kalen Mitra or um, the uh, Lama and the Gereshinian interchangeably together. So you will nowadays actually find a lot of monks, Tibetan monks uh, being referred to as Lama. And uh, uh, you will find, uh, you know, your teachers being referred to as Lamas. You, you will find your teachers being referred to as gurus, and et cetera, et cetera. So there's a lot of mix up here. So, uh, so, so the first dis distinction that you need to re recognize is that in the sutra, uh, spiritual friend, the term spiritual friend is used. So sutra is a non-tantric Buddhist teaching or practices. Uh, and then in the tantrayana, which is the tantric or vajrayana, which is the tantric practice, practice, tantric practice is an esoteric practice. So in the esoteric practices of vajrayana, you will find uh, your teacher is referred to as a guru. Uh, so there's this dis distinction there and uh, so you can uh, uh, also conclude here that uh, your guru is necessarily your teacher but your teacher may or may not necessarily be your guru so for example when you go to a school you have your own <clears throat> you have your english teacher maths teacher philosophy teacher etc etc so the, all of them are your teachers but they are not necessarily your uh, master or your guru, uh, but your guru is always your teacher and master, but your teachers are not necessarily your uh, master or your guru. Or in the Tibetan sense, uh, in, the, in the Tibetan terms, your uh, teacher may not necessarily be your lama. So, um, so, the, so, so, so the, <clears throat> the reason why it is important to distinct distinguish these two is uh, uh, when we, as I said earlier, uh, Tibetan Buddhism being a Vajrayana Buddhist uh, Buddhism, um, the, you know, uh, um, the term uh, guru uh, is very popular among the, the Lama is very popular among Tibetans. So Lama is equivalent to guru. And uh, so the term guru is uh, very popular among uh, people who practice Tibetan Buddhism. And it is regarded as all your teachers are your gurus. <clears throat> uh, so <clears throat> so the uh, reason I'm trying to draw this distinct, uh, distinction is that uh, um, someone who helps you to grow spiritually is your spiritual teacher or a virtuous friend or like Kalen Mitra is a spiritual friend, someone who helps you to grow uh, spiritually. And uh, that person may or may not necessarily be your guru. And uh, the uh, a guru is someone who from whom you receive uh, uh, tantric instructions, uh, whether it is in the form of commentaries, it is in the form of empowerments, and etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. So only that person can be deemed as your guru. But uh, if you read most in 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 a 
and most of the Tibetan text actually, if, if the author is Tibetan, then the term guru and uh, Kalyan Mitra are used interchangeably. Guru, master, and uh, guru, master, and Kalyan Mitra. Uh, so not master, but like uh, the Acharya or Lobin. Guru, which is Lama, Acharya, which is Lobin, and Kalyan Mitra, which is Gereshenya. So these three were terms are used interchangeably. Uh, and the reason, main reason is because uh, whenever the uh, lamas give teaching in, in Tibetan Buddhist, in, in, to Tibetan audiences, usually they take for granted that the audience are something that are that, that, that is attuned towards or familiar with uh, the concept of Vajrayana Buddhism as well. And most of the time they, you know, we used to go to the same teacher who, from whom we re receive uh, sutra teachings as well as tantra teaching. So for that reason, it is always used interchangeably. But in reality, there is a difference between uh, a teacher, uh, a person from whom you receive like a very general uh, knowledge like uh, science and uh, ma mathematics and uh, commerce, etc., cetera, or uh, spiritual teachers whom, from whom you receive many different kinds of meditation, uh, etc., And then uh, tantric teachers which from whom you receive empowerments etc uh, which is regarded as a guru so these three are there, there's a difference between those three so so you might think you might think that uh, these are all these are all technical terms guru uh, <clears throat> guru uh, acharya and uh, the uh, kalyan mitra or teacher, master, and uh, guru, but there's no equivalent for guru in English anyways. So uh, it's not it, it, it's not uh, just a technical uh, difference, but there are actually uh, uh, deep um, differences, profound differences between the three actually, uh, the, the two, especially the uh, teacher and guru, uh, Kalyan Mitra and your guru. And Kalyan Mitra is actually very similar to a Dharma friend. So again, you, you might have the question, so if the Kalan Mitra is someone who helps you grow spiritually, then what is that the difference between a Dharma friend and a spiritual friend or a virtuous friend? So <clears throat> you call your teacher in the sutra, you call your teacher a spiritual friend or a, a virtuous friend, but then your Dharma friend is also your friend. So if your teacher is has the same sort of uh, uh, um, status as your friend, then where does this practice leads to? You know, you, have, you might have this kind of question. So, uh, so we, for this, we actually have to go back to the root meaning of the word friend. So friend is someone who helps you, uh, someone who uh, sub, uh, someone who supports, assists, or helps you uh, to grow, to do whatever you want to do. Um, so someone who helps you to grow in general is your friend, someone who helps you to get better, someone who helps you uh, in times of uh, need uh, um, is someone, is a is a friend, is a real friend. So there's a phrase in English which is which goes something like a friend indeed, uh, a friend in need is a friend indeed. So when someone helps you, uh, when you need them, that is your friend. So in similarly, in a spiritual friend, and so I'm going to tell you Dhamma friend and spiritual friend, the difference between Dhamma friend and spiritual friend. So spiritual friend, uh, a Dharma friend is someone whom you can, you, you have received, um, so when, so when two of us, when two people attend the same teaching, uh, then these two people become the student of one guru or one teacher or one master. And these two people become Dharma friends. So we attend the same Dharma class. That means we are Dharma friends. Uh, so the teacher gave a very lengthy, uh, <clears throat> very profound and very lengthy instruction. And I don't remember this in that part. So I can ask my friend, my Dharma friend, about what the teacher said, and the Dharma friend can tell me this and this and that. And then um, it helps me grow as well. But in the, it, it, it's more in the sense of feedbacks. So the, the help or the support that your Dharma friend gives is in the, uh, in the form of feedbacks. So uh, small, minimal. Uh, at, at a teacher uh, or a spiritual friend, Kalen Mitra, a virtuous friend or a spiritual friend, is someone who gives you uh, not just feedbacks, but the actual information and instructions in bulk. 
the whole information is provided to you. Whatever information that you require is given to you pre uh, beforehand. So Dharma friend is someone you ask the questions later after receiving your instructions. A spiritual friend or a virtuous friend or a Kalamitra or a teacher is someone uh, who you receive the instructions uh, beforehand uh, and uh, or you know earlier, right? So before you receive the instructions, the teachings, the Dharma, the doctrine, and uh, so because of the instructions, because of the uh, teaching, the doctrine that you receive from this particular person, you start to grow spiritually. And that person is your spiritual teacher. So the difference between a spiritual teacher, a virtuous friend, and a Dharma friend, spiritual friend and virtuous friend is the same thing. So the literal translation is virtuous friend, but most people call it spiritual friend. So Dharma friend, the, the, the difference between a spiritual friend and a Dharma friend is that a Dharma friend is something or some, someone that gives you feedback as to what to do and etc. And then also to support you whenever you need help. Vis-a-vis uh, -vis a spiritual friend or a teacher is someone who gives you all the information that you require um, in bulk, not as in a feedback, but as in an instru in instructional manner. So that is your teacher. And uh, uh, so seeing your teacher as your friend is, uh, is, is very unique and uh, it's very important. So nowadays we have developed, especially in the South, uh, especially in, the, uh, in, 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 in Asian culture, whether it's uh, Tibetan, Chinese, Vietnamese, wherever, we have developed this uh, tendency, this habit of like, you know, bowing down and like, you know, like going full, uh, you know, to, towards the teacher with, in, a, in, in, in order to show respect. So of course, respect is very important. Uh, but respect is something that is shared between, uh, it, it, uh, re respect is actually, um, you know, uh, reciprocative. So uh, the teacher, the, 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 the student must respect the teacher and the teacher also must respect the student. So it's not like uh, the teacher, the student always put the teacher on their head and the teacher always like, uh, you know, pushes the student down on their you know, step, steps on, steps their foot on the teacher uh, student so it's not something like that but uh um you know un, uh, due to many unfortunate uh, uh, circumstances it is something it has turned into something like that a real teacher should be like a, a real spiritual teacher should be a friend so that, that's why the term uh spiritual friend is used so it's a friend a friend can be very soft speaking and also your friend, you know, if you, all of you, we all have our good friends, best, best of the best friends. So the best of best friends never tells us uh, things softly. Sometimes they show us whenever we make mistakes, they tell you, tell, tell us uh, face to face. They say, this is not good. You should not do this. You should not have said that. You should do this and that. Sometimes we are, you know, um, and uh, uh, when someone else, points out those mistakes, we get angry. But when our friends, our real friends, true friends, people who regard, whom we regard as our true friends, when they show us our mistakes, we actually take them in good hand. We take them as a, a constructive criticism. And then we try to uh, develop ourselves. We try to improve ourselves. So that is how, uh, that is the actual outlook of a teacher or a Kalin Mitra we should have. So it is not something that I can change. Uh, you know, it's it's too big. A, it's too big a wheel for me to turn. I cannot turn this wheel. Uh, but I'm just sharing my my thoughts. So, uh, and uh, from my 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 perspective, my uh, my perspective towards my teacher is something like that. I see all of my teachers as my friends. So some of my friends are very fierce, very aggressive. Some of my friends are very soft uh, spoken, gentle, and uh, but they are all very helpful to me. They're all uh, there for me when I need them. <clears throat> so um, I, uh, so this is how we should be uh, looking at our teachers. So I'm talking about uh, the teachers in the sense of uh, Sutrayana in the Kalyan Mitra sense. So when it comes to uh, the uh, 
the, 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 the topic of guru, it's a totally different thing, uh, which we don't have much time, I think, for now. But uh, I will talk about it next session. So I think this should be sufficient for today's topic of how to follow uh, uh, Kalyan Mitra, how to follow a spiritual friend, how to follow a teacher. So a teacher is a generic term that we can use for our masters, our uh, spiritual friends, our guru, etc. Uh, so I think we can conclude here uh, for now. Oh, so one important thing I just remembered is uh, uh, <clears throat> that, uh, so the Dharma friend, spiritual friend and guru. So the three, uh, you know, there's a, I try to make a distinction between the three. So my teacher always tells us that, uh, um, tells us that uh, it's important to, when you, you know, first approach Buddhism, uh, especially when, or when you are, thinking of seriously studying Buddhism, it's best to approach someone who is more knowledgeable than you as a Dhamma friend first. Uh, you listen to that person's teaching, you know, have a conversation, etc., etc., And gradually, uh, you know, if you like that person's character, if you think that person's character is solid enough, sound enough as uh, that person speaks. So basically if that person is uh, walking the talk uh, if the person is practicing what he's preaching, then you can actually take them as <clears throat> your spiritual uh, friend or a teacher, uh, and then uh, then then gradually uh, you can receive uh, tantric instructions and empowerment from that person, and take that person as your guru as well. Okay, so do you have any questions? Well, we have one question, Michela. I read it. Sure. Go ahead, um, please. Nubri um, uh, is only Padma Sambhava is called Guru Rinpoche, or can we call one of our revered Rinpoche as Guru Rinpoche as well? Thank you, Rinpoche. Uh, <clears throat> so uh, Padma Sambhava is the actual name. And so he has many titles. Sometimes we call him the Lotus Born. And some, most of the time we refer to him as Guru Padma Sambhava or in Tibetan Guru Rinpoche. Uh, so these are all the different titles that were uh, um, offered or given to him. His actual name is Padma Sambhava. Uh, <clears throat> uh, um, uh, uh, in connection to, in relation to this question, there was a, there was a direct question posed to me on the, on the app. Uh, so someone has said that there are many uh, in, in Facebook, there are monks who, uh, who are, who, who are uh, called Lama and etc., like Guru or Lama and Rinpoche and etc. So should, should I uh, refuse to call them Lama because they're not my Lama and etc. So uh, this is the thing. So when you go to, uh, um, a, when you go to a Christian missionary school, or when you go to a church, the the priest usually if you refer you call the priest the father, right? Um, <clears throat> so it does not mean that person you do not consider that person as your own father, but you you call them the father because that is that that that, that is the constitution that is that, that is how it works. So similarly, uh, people who use the name Lama or Rinpoche or whatever. On social media that is their name or title so if they want to be known that way then you can call them in such a way but you would not think of that person just like you would not think of a priest as your father your own father similarly uh you do not have to from 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 your heart you do not have to take or accept or think of that person as your guru right my guru my teacher my lama because Lama and Guru has the same meaning, same connotation. So uh, you can think of that person, the person who used the name Lama or Buche in their title as, uh, as, as a part of their name, right? Someone, there, there are people who, who are called, uh, they're, uh, I'm not trying to, you know, point any fingers, but like, you know, for example, there are beggars who are called King, uh, King, uh, King John or King Richard, um, but they're not actually kings. Uh, they are beggars, but their name is king. Uh, so just because the, 
the person's name is the king or your majesty or something like that, that doesn't mean the person is actually a king. So the same goes uh, in that, that case. So a person can be referred to as a lama or a rinbuche or tulku due to, because they uh, would like to be known in such a way themselves or you know a certain group of people would want to regard him as such, but you do not have to take it as your guru or your Rinpoche or your teacher. <clears throat> so I think there's a question from Galaxy A20, a raising hand. Okay, go on. the question comes. Um, we have another question from Shavi. Yes. Um, I'll read that. Oh, yeah. oh, uh, okay, go ahead. Uh, prostrate to Rinpoche Lai. Uh, how do we how to practice from understanding to emulate e emulating the teacher's realization properly? Um, thank you, Rumiche. Mm. <clears throat> so, uh, so the question is how to practice uh, the emulation of the teacher's realization. So. Uh, so the best way the 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 the, pro, the most appropriate way, the most perfect way to <clears throat> practice that is to uh, to emulate the teacher's realization, you have to emulate or you have to follow the instructions that were given by the teacher. So uh, depending on your mental capacity, depending on your background, depending on what kind of baggages that you have been carrying and et cetera, et cetera, uh, your teacher will give you a certain uh, practice to do. Uh, sometimes the teacher will say, just study, you know, do not do any chanting recitation. Sometimes the teacher will never give you even one instruction, just tell you to do, you know, uh, different work, like, you know, build a temple, build a stupa. I don't know, like, you know, do this and do that. Uh, for example, in Milarepa's case, his teacher was not ready to give him any teaching for about, uh, I don't know, three years or some, I, I don't know the exact duration, but he has to build that stupa, uh, the temple, the, the, the the house three times. Mm -hmm. So your teacher uh, will give you, depending on your capabilities, your teacher will give you specific instructions. So you have to follow them accordingly. Uh, so there is the generic sort of teaching, general teaching or generic teaching that you will receive in any book. Uh, that is not necessary. It, it's a very good book. It's a very informative book but it's more or less like a dictionary. So dictionary is a very good book, but if you just open a dictionary, you don't know where to begin or end or you know what to pick or what not to pick. Um, so a book, uh, <clears throat> a, a Dharma book without a teacher is, is a very good book. It's like a very good dictionary. So a dictionary is a very resourceful book, but without, uh, if you do not have a context, if you do not have a reference, um, a book to reference with, then just memorizing the whole dictionary will, you know, it's kind of doesn't make much sense. You will, uh, I, I, I think you get the idea anyways. So uh, with the proper, when, when you have a proper teacher, when you have a teacher, the teacher will actually, without a teacher, you will give a, you will give, you will get a general idea of what to do, or what to follow, but the specific instructions, you should get it from your teacher and that your teacher might tell you to like a dictionary, the teacher, the book, the dictionary is the Dharma, Dharma practice. The dictionary is the practice. The teacher is the book that you are referencing with in order to, uh, the, the book that you are referencing, the book you are reading, and then you are referencing that with the dictionary, right? So the teacher is the, uh, the book that you're reading and the uh, dictionary is like that, uh, the, 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 uh, the dictionary is like the instructions so the teacher will give specific instructions so if you do not understand a proper uh, particular word while reading a particular while reading a certain book you do not understand a particular particular word then you refer to the dictionary so this is how you should use use a dictionary you do not memorize the whole dictionary you know even though there are people who do that uh, but that doesn't make that doesn't make much sense to me memorize the whole dictionary. So the idea is to read a certain book, and when you don't understand the meaning of the book, 
then you refer to a dictionary. So, uh, so the teacher is, the instructions of the teacher uh, is like that, uh, the, um, the dictionary. So whatever particular specific instruction that your teacher gives you, you should uh, follow that accordingly. Um, so the basic, uh, so the most pro appropriate way to follow uh, practice from the understanding, practicing or understanding the emulation of teacher's realization is through uh, following their specific, their, in, their specific instructions proper, properly. Mm. We have a one okay. more question, Rumichi. Sure, go ahead. Um, Rumichi, it'll be morning when I practice mantras. Uh, am I allowed to vi visualize you in the form of a deity? Thank you, Rumichi. Uh, so if you have received an empowerment from me of this particular deity, uh, then, <clears throat> then, you, then you can do it, yeah. Any more? Um, no more? No more questions from Regina. Okay, okay. Thank you. Okay, so we, we conclude now, yeah? Okay. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> <laughs>